Welcome to yet another lecture on control system one. Myself Prozitora, Assistant Professor of Dr. Sudhir Chandra Shur, Degree Engineering College, Electrical Engineering Department. So till now, we have learned about the control system. What is control system? Why the control system is required? And what are the different types of control system? The open loop control system and the closed loop control system. Followed by, we have learned that what is transfer function? It is a ratio of the Laplace output to the Laplace input, keeping all the initial conditions at zero. So this phenomenon is known to us. So why the transfer function is required? And what is the open loop transfer function? And what is the closed loop transfer function? And what is the outcome of a closed loop transfer function? Is that the transfer function equal to g by one plus g into h, where g is the open loop transfer function and h is the feedback. Then we have learned about the responses of a system. It means the impulse and the unit step response and depending upon the stability of the system. We also know what are the poles and zeros of the system and depending upon the poles, means if the poles are lies on the left hand side of the S plane, the system is said to be a stable one and the nature of the graph is converging in nature and if the poles are lies on the right hand side of the S plane if any pole the nature of the graph is diverging in nature and the system is said a unstable one and if the poles are lies on the origin the system is said to be a marginally stable system and we also know how we can form the log diagram of a system so depending upon the different situations and different circumstances, we have to reduce the block diagram to a easiest option so that our calculation make very easy during the problem solving. So today our topic is block diagram reduction technique. So let us our topic is the block diagram reduction technique. Let us take this block. Let us take this. Uh, let us start the system by taking that particular block, the block diagram reduction technique, this block. Why this block is equivalent to this one? So now let us take the first one, the block that we have. input is A, B here, It is given that why is this block is equivalent to this one means we are doing the block reduction technique is our first one. Why these two blocks are equivalent? Okay, let's do it. 
So what is the output in that particular area? What is the output? Plus A, plus B. It is summing here. So the output is A plus B. So this output is fitted to that particular second summing point. And here another point is coming minus C. C and here is a minus sign means minus C. This one is the last one. Okay. So what is the input, output? Output is A plus B minus C. Okay. So why this block, the first block diagram is equivalent to the second one, means we are doing the block reduction technique. So what is the output in that particular A? This is A plus A minus C. And this is fit to that particular summing point. And this is plus B. So what is the output in that area? It is A plus B minus C. So if I take this output and this output, both are same. So that is why we can write that this block is equivalent to the this one and this is called the block reduction technique of the first one. Okay, now we come to the second block reduction technique. The second one. Let us take an, another block. Why this block is equivalent to this one? The question will arise. So, after doing the block reduction technique, we will get the answer that why this block is equivalent to this one. So let us take, it is plus A plus B minus A. So what is the output here? It will be A plus B minus C. Okay, so what is the output from here? A plus B, so output here, plus A plus B. And output from that summing, first summing point is A plus B. Now a minus C is coming. So the output here is A plus B, which is fitted here. A plus B minus C. So we have seen that we've seen that this one is equivalent to this one. Output are same. So we are using the second technique of the block reduction. Now you are taking the third block reduction technique. We are going to the second block reduction, first second, and now we are going to the third block reduction technique.
why this law reduction technique is equivalent to this one means instead of write the plus block we can directly go to the second block the question is why after including the block reduction technique i think instead of the first block we can directly write the second block how so i input a is fitted and i'm um, gain is get g1 so after getting the gain output at that particular part is a g1 now this a g1 is multiplying with another gain called g2 so the output from that part is the total output of the blocks is a g1 g2 so if i go through that particular block input is a and finding again g1 g2 so output from that particular block is a g1 g2 so these two outputs are same so instead of writing the first block we can write the second block this is our another block reduction technique instead of writing the first one we can write the second one so the huge blocks are nullified and we can take a single block in order to omit the two blocks two gain blocks okay so let's take the fourth one So this is our, our first block. So we can, how we can make a simplification from of that first block. All the blocks are omitted and a single block is enough to find the output from the entire block. This is called the block reduction technique. So why this first block is equivalent to the second one? Let's see the first block and why it is equivalent to the second one. Now, what is output? A is fitted and a gain block is given. So output at that particular part is A G1. This A is taken from that particular one, this one, this is an A value. So O is taken, A is taken, and it is multiplied with G2. So we are getting from here A G2. So there is a plus minus sign in the summing block. So it is a plus, it is a plus minus. So output is A G1 plus minus g2 total output from the inter block now this is a this is g1 plus minus g2 so what is the output from that block a g1 plus minus g2 so it is seen that both the output are same 
so we can converting a huge blocks uh, many blocks to a single block this is called for the purpose of our calculation means how is easily we can calculate a big block structure into a single one so this is another block reduction technique that we have done today okay now going to the fifth one A flip block reduction technique I this one is equivalent to case of vice versa okay all the block reduction technique the case of vice versa the second one can be also be converted into the first one for all the cases okay so why this first block is equivalent to the second block so this second block can also be converted to the first one let's take it look it so this is a a so output from that block is a again is getting g and the output from that point is a so this a is generally known as this point this, this point from here the a is taken off this is generally known as take of point this is nearly known as take off point this point this one okay so let's take what is the value at that particular point well is a g okay so the value at that particular point is also a g this a g is taken here going there here and it's multiplying with 1 by g so a g into 1 by g is the output is a so it is seen that again i am repeating this a g is taken here it is multiplying with 1 by g a g into 1 by g is output is a so it is seen that this one is equivalent to this one total output this one is equivalent to this one so that is why we can do the block reduction technique of that particular block means we can do the block reduction from first block to second means from this one to this one or if this one is given you can convert into this one this is a vice versa case okay so another block reduction technique now i am showing So now 
now you will better able to understand why this one is equivalent to this one so let's check it so it is a and it is getting getting again g so output here is the a g and it is directly the output here in this point is a g okay and output from that but this one is a g for value here so it is coming down here so output is a g So now take it, A is multiplying with again G, so output here in this particular block or output is the AG. And now this is same conception, this A is taken from here and it is multiplying with G, so output here is the AG. So if I take one output AG, AG, so output is AG and AG. So both of the outputs are same. So this is the another process of block reduction technique. So this is an another process of block reduction technique. So let's go to the another technique of block reduction process. Using another block reduction technique process. And the process that now I am going to to the block reduction of that particular block. process of doing the dock reduction technique of particular block so why these two blocks are equivalent okay so this one a plus a and minus b so output here A minus B. So it is multiplying with a gain or G. So total output from this particular block is A minus B into G. Okay. So this one is A and the gain block is G and this output from that block is A G. And it is fitted to this summing point. And this is a B and it is multiplying with G. So output here on that multiplying is the BG. So one is plus AG and one is 
minus bt so total output is a minus b from the enter block is a minus b into g so if you see that output from the both blocks are same so this is an another process of block reduction technique so let's take an another block diagram to find the block reduction technique another block reduction technique process that we are doing now So let's check that why the two blocks are equivalent. So the output here is the A G because A is multiplying with the gain factor G and the, in the summing point the output is it is related to a summing point plus A G minus B. So output is A G minus B. Now take this A is filled here and it is B it is multiplying with 1 by G so output here b by g so the output from that particular output of the summing point is a minus b by g a minus b by g now it is multiplying with a gain called g so output from here is a into g a g a into g a g minus b by g into g is b so it is found that both the output are same so this is an another process of block reduction technique that's another process of block reduction technique so let us take an another example of block reduction technique that we have already known in order to do the memorization this is already known to us we have done it and it is pretty much used during the block reduction technique problem Conception of feedback
So why these two blocks are equivalent? We'll do it. This is a block reduction technique. The output from that block is, we all know, we have done it several times. The feedback is there. So output is a g one plus minus g h. So it will be same here. It will be output from here again. Block is there a g one plus minus g h so if i see this as those two outputs are same so this is a very commonly used block diagram reduction technique we have seen the different types of block diagram reduction technique so now we will do a mathematical problem in order to understand the block reduction technique so those block reduction techniques are given that we have done now it is given that find the CYR means the output by input for the block diagram. This and see the output, the R is the input shown below use the block diagram reduction technique. So this is an inter block. So first of all, you have seen that, that just we have done it, this particular part. So what is the output for that particular part? This one, G3 1 plus G3 H2. If I take the block reduction technique, just we have done just. Now after doing that, it will multiply with an G4 that this phenomenon is happening. So here the total open loop gain that gone G3 G4 1 plus G3 H2. Okay, this one. So it will be treated as a G. So again, we can use the formula. Again, this block must be reducted. So you can use the formula of 1 plus we can use the formula G by 1 plus GH, 1 plus GH. So total G is this one, G3, G4 by 1 plus G3, G2, and H is H1. So during the reduction, we're just getting that G3, G4, 1 plus G3, H2, 1 plus G3, G4, H1, 1 plus G3, H2. So here, this one is just multiplying G1 into 1 plus G2, G1 into 1 plus G2. Again, we have taking this H1 as a feedback already we have done and another feedback is the means we have done first we have done what we have done first we have do this portion as a block reduction technique a feedback then this portion the total gain is multiplying whatever that we have get in this reducing that block reduction means G3 1 plus G3 H2 it is totally multiplied with G4 to get that open loop gain means this total part is eliminated then it will the open loop gain become G3, G4, 1 plus, that's 1, G3, G4, 1 plus G3, H2. So this one having an H1 feedback, negative feedback. So the formula again is G by 1 plus G, H2, G, H. So using the formula, we just deduct that. And it is just the multiplication. So again, the entire block became multiplying these two and having an unity feedback system. So the total output is became that one. C is by R is is G1, 1 plus G2, G3, G4 by 1 plus G3, H2 plus G3, G4, H1 plus G1, G3, G4 plus G1, G2, G3, G4. The total block diagram reduction technique. So I think we have understood the block diagram reduction technique. So different block diagram reduction technique in order to find the easiest way to approach for the solution of an problem, numerical problem. Thank you.